the last meeting we have discussed the, how to find derivatives of algebraic functions. For this video, we will be learning about higher derivatives and what are some of its applications in calculus. So higher derivatives, if for example you have y as a function of x, and if you were asked for y prime, we know that y prime is the derivative of y with respect to x. And this is what we call our first derivative. And it represents the change in the value of y with respect to the change in the value of x. Now, what is the change in the value of y prime? If, for example, you were asked the change in the value of y prime with respect to the change of the value of x, this now will be equal to derivative of your y prime is equal to dy over dx divided by dx and we can write this as d squared y over dx the quantity is squared this now will be our second derivative And if you were asked to look for the derivative of y double prime, y double prime, the second derivative, or we can move this one here. This is equal to y double prime. If you were asked to look for the change in y double prime, with respect to the change in x, this now will be equal to the derivative of y prime is equal to d squared of y divided by dx the quantity squared divided by dx. This is equal to d raised to 3 of y over d of x the quantity raised to 3. This is what we call our y triple prime our third derivative this goes on to the fourth derivative fifth derivative and so on so as a general rule the nth derivative y raised to n is equal to d raised to n of y divided by dx raised to n. This is what we call our nth derivative. This is the concept of your higher derivatives. Now let's try to solve for some examples on higher derivatives. So our example one would be example we have y is equal to x raised to 3 minus x squared plus 2x plus 5. What if you were asked to find the fourth derivative? y the fourth derivative of y with respect to x. So the first step naturally would be to get y, y prime or the first derivative because you cannot arrive with the fourth derivative without solving first for the first, second, and third derivative. So we will solve for the first derivative and that is equal to derivative of y with respect to x. And this is equal to applying the power formula this would be bring down the exponent, copy the base. New exponent would be 2. Negative 2x raised to 1 
or simply negative 2x plus 2 plus 0. That is your y prime. For the y double prime, that is the derivative of your y prime with respect to x still. Because we are talking about the change of this value with respect to the change in the value of x. So this is equal to d2y over dx raised to 2. And this would be the derivative of y prime with respect to x. This would be equal to 6x raised to 1 minus 2. And y triple prime is equal to the change in the second derivative with respect to the change in x. And this would be equal to 6 minus 0. Okay? So for the fourth derivative, which is the one being asked for this problem, the fourth derivative is equal to d raised to 4 of y over dx raised to 4. Remember, this is the whole quantity of the derivative of x raised to 4 is being raised to 4. So that is a constant. So the change in a constant should always be equal to, or the derivative of a constant should always be equal to 0. So that's it. We have our fourth derivative being equal to 0. Let's have another example. So let's have our second example. This time, let's have x is equal to y raised to 4 minus y squared minus 4y. And what if you are asked to find x triple prime? So this would be x prime is equal to the derivative of y with respect to, or the derivative of x rather, with respect to the change in the value of y. Applying the power formula for this equation, we will have 4y raised to 3 minus 2y raised to 1 minus 4 x double prime is equal to the derivative of x prime with respect to y and that would be 12 that is 4 times the exponent because we bring we brought the exponent down so that would be 4 times 3 copy the base and the exponent minus 1 this would be 2 minus 2 minus 0. And finally, for the third derivative of x with respect to y, this would be the derivative of x double prime with respect to y. So this would be 24 of y minus 0. Or simply, x triple prime is equal to 24y. You have your answer for the third derivative. Now if you will ask, where is, where are this, uh, where are higher derivatives being applied? So one application of that would be in plotting graphs of certain curves. So let's have a simple, uh, simple problem. Applications. Remember, but before we proceed, let us first recall the con some concepts from your pre-calculus subject or your analytic geometry to be exact. 
The concept of a slope. What is a slope? This describes the steepness and direction of a line so basically we have a horizontal line a vertical line a line that's going up and a line that's going down a slope is written as M. So that is the slope, and this can also be described as the rise over run. Rise over the run, or, or the number of units of its rise and the number of units of the run of a line. So for a line, this one has a rise of zero. Zero over A run of this value for example the length of this line is a or any number there the length of the line let's say a so let's assume that all of this line has the same length of a so this would be equal to 0 0 divided by any number is equal to 0 so the slope of a horizontal line is equal to 0 for a vertical line it has a rise of a for example because we assume that the length of these lines are the same to be a so this would be a and its run is equal to 0 or the number of its run is zero so any number divided by zero is undefined or we can also say that it is equal to infinity or undefined Infinity and undefined is not the same, but there are some explanations on why is it considered to be infinite. In the meantime, let's just focus that. Let's just remember that the slope of a vertical line is equal to infinity. So this one would be would have a positive slope because its run is from this. From this point, its rise is positive. When you place this in a Cartesian plane, for example, this is your x and your y axis, it has a rise of a positive value. Okay, this is your origin, for example, this is your line there it has a positive rise and it, it has a positive run so generally the slope of this kinds of line is a positive value so for this one if you place it in the Cartesian plane The slope is having a positive run but a negative rise. It descends. So this is a negative rise divided by a positive run. So negative divided by positive 
the slope is equal to a negative value. So these are the four basic types of four types of your slope. And as I have told you from our previous discussions, that y prime is equal to the slope of a line. Because y prime is equal to dy over dx, the change in y divided by the change in x. Change in y refers to the value of your rise. And the change in x refers to the value of the run. So that is equal to the slope of a line. Okay, so that is one of the concepts that we will use in the applications of higher derivatives. Another concept is the concept of tangents and normals to a curve. For example, we have this curve. And you would want to, let me redraw the curve for a better illustration. Okay, I think this would do. So, if this is the maximum point, this continues down, and this will continue going up. So technically, the maximum, the minimum point or the lowest point would be going to the infinite, to the infinity, because this this is continuing down. It will never go up again. So this one will never go down. It will continue going up. So technically, the highest point would be unknown it is up, up to infinity so let's just focus on these two points here the maximum point and the minimum point this is what we call r let me change the color of our pen this would be your maximum point and this is our minimum point okay this one here we have a point here that we call the point of inflection okay so if that is the maximum point, it will have what we call your tangent line. From your pre-calculus, tangent line is a line that passes through the curve at only one point. It passes the curve. one point and it should always important to remember take note that the slope of the tangent line at a particular point is equal to the slope of the curve at the same point. So there we have it. So in other words, the tangent line represents the slope of the curve at any given point. So because every 
this curve is composed of many points, right? For you to be able to write this curve, you need to have a lot of points and you, we will just connect it to each other. So that is composed of infinite number of points and each of those points have their tangent line. So for example, we have a tangent line here. Oops. Let me paste this one. We have a tangent line here. It passes at only one point. It's hard to draw. So bear with me. Tangent line there. And at the maximum point, that is a point. So it will have a tangent line. Oops. So it will have a tangent line. The point of inflection will have its tangent line and also your minimum point. So all of these points have their tangent line. Let, let me just move this one a bit up, upward so that it will be collinear with the point or the minimum point. So all of these have their all of these points have their corresponding tangent lines and those tangent lines has the same slope with the curve at that given point so the slope of this line is equal to the slope of the curve at this point okay because all of those tangent lines will have each will have their the same number of uh, we have their corresponding tangent line under. Okay? So how do we use higher derivatives in this concepts? Okay? So we have your maximum point of inflection and minimum point. Your maximum point is the maximum point that is visible aside from the one that is continuing up here your minimum point is the one that is visible aside from the points that are go going or continuing to go down at this portion of your curve take note that there can be two maximum points two or more maximum points one or more maximum points or there can also be two or more minimum points and, for example, if you have a parabola that is facing upward, for this part, you have a minimum point that is visible. This is the minimum point, the center of your parabola. This will continue to go up, up to infinity, so there is no maximum point. Pero meron siyang, it has a minimum point. For example, if a parabola that faces downward has a center at that point, this is your maximum point. But it does not have a minimum point that is visible because this will continue to go down. Technically, the minimum point will be up to infinity. Parabola that faces to the right has no maximum point and no minimum point because this will continue to infinity going up and this will continue to infinity going down. There is no maximum or minimum point. So maximum point and minimum point can either be zero or more okay zero maximum or zero minimum points or more so what is the point of inflection the point of inflection is the point wherein the change in the slope happens from the maximum point going to the point of inflection just right before the point of inflection all of these points will have a positive or a negative 
slope. So from this section up to this portion here just before the point of inflection, it will have a negative slope. And also here. Just right before the minimum point, it will have its negative slope. But then, if you will notice, there is a change in the concavity of your curve. This is so for these portions, although they have the same slope, same value, negative. All of this has negative slopes, but for this portion, if you will notice, this slope is lower than the slope of this point here. So it increases its slope in the absolute, the absolute value of its slope increases, absolute meaning you are not considering the, the sign. For example, you have your negative 2. Its absolute value is equal to just 2. You are not considering the value of your or the sign convention. So the absolute value of this slope is lower than the absolute value of this slope here. It increases its slope or its steepness. So pag if you have an increasing absolute value of slope that is equal to concave upward for increasing absolute value of slope concave downward if decreasing absolute value of the slope. So for this portion, this is concave upward. For the second portion here, just right after the point of inflection, before the minimum point, is concaving downward. So the point of inflection determines the point wherein the change in the concavity of the slope happens. From concave upward, it is now concaving downward. So that is the point of inflection. So continuing, how do we find these critical points? The minimum point, the maximum point, and the point of inflection are what we call your critical points. Minimum point, maximum point, and the point of inflection or the inflection point. So to find this one, the first step is for maximum and minimum points. So for maximum and minimum points, you look for y prime and you equate that to 0. Why are we equating it to 0? Because y prime represents the slope of a line. And if you will, as I have said a while ago, the slope, this is a horizontal line 
its slope, the slope of a maximum and the minimum point, or its tangent line is a horizontal line. So the slope of a max of a horizontal line is equal to zero. So we will equate y prime to zero to find these points. After equating it to zero, we will have the values for we have two points. We will have points. And to find whether the point is a maximum or minimum point, because remember here, these two points have the same slope, equal to zero. But we don't know which is which, for example, if you don't know the, the graph. So there is another test to determine whether that point is a maximum or a minimum point. And this point is a maximum or a minimum point. For example, we have here your test. After finding the points, the maximum or the, and the minimum point, we will test the value. If y double prime is equal to a negative value, then that point is a maximum point. If y double prime is equal to a positive value, then that is a minimum point. And lastly, to find the points of inflection, for the points of inflection, what you will do is to find y double prime and equate that to zero. Now, why, why are we equating it to zero because remember y double prime is referring to the change in the value of y prime or the change in the value of slope and from our figure the point of inflection is where the change the transition from the concavity happens so the change in the slope there is equal to zero after equating it to zero you will have your points of inflection now going back here, why is it that for y double prime have for points that has y double prime equal to negative, it is a maximum point. And for y double prime that is having a positive value, it is having it is equal to or it is a minimum point. Going back to the figure, you have here a maximum point. We are referring to the change in the slope. So from a positive slope to a negative slope the change in the slope is negative it decreased and for the minimum point from a negative slope, it will transition to a positive slope. So there is an increase in the slope of our points. So that is how you find your critical points. Let's have one example for higher derivatives application. example you have y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1 from your analytic geometry this is a graph of a parabola so let's try to find the critical points let us first solve for the maximum or minimum point and to for that to be obtained we need to look for y prime and equate that to zero so y prime is equal to 2x plus 2 we will equate y prime to zero thus we will have 2x plus 2 is equal to zero and x 
now is equal to 2x is equal to transpose this to the other side this will become negative 2 divide both sides by 2 or cross multiply 2 to the other side of your equation we will have x is equal to negative 2 divided by 2 this is equal to negative 1 we now have the we now have the value of x in some cases there are two values of x but for this one for this graph we have only one value for x but remember in the Cartesian plane to have a point here that should be an ordered pair there should have a value of x and a value of y this is an ordered pair x and y we only have the value of x but we don't have the corresponding value for the y to for us to find that specific point and for that to be, be solved we will just substitute the value of x from our original equation so this would be y is equal to x squared plus 2x am i right plus 1 so to find the value of y you will just substitute the value of x because that is an ordered pair this is negative 1 raised to 2 plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1 negative 1 raised to 2 is positive 1 positive 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1 this will be 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0 so we have an ordered pair negative 1 and 0 but we don't know if this is a maximum or a minimum point so for us to determine whether this is a maximum or minimum point we will do the test and that would be y double prime so from our y prime of 2x plus 2 let's copy first your y prime 2x plus 2 we will solve for the value of y double prime y double prime or the derivative of y prime with respect to x is equal to positive 2 and since that is a positive value meaning this point only one point is negative 1 and 0 is a minimum point so the parabola opens upward because if that is a minimum then it should be at the bottom okay so for the point of inflection since that is a constant we can say that there is no point of inflection there is no change in the concavity in these points so this is concaving downward and this is concaving upward so that is one example another example would be this one Let's have a more complicated one. y is equal to x raised to 3 plus x raised to 2 plus x plus 1. So to find the maximum and minimum points, we need to look for y prime. And that is 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then equate y prime to 0 to find the maximum or minimum or end minimum points. This would be 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 equal to 0. 
applying quadratic formula, x is equal to negative b, positive negative square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So, find the values of x, we will have x is equal to negative 3, positive or negative. Positive and negative means we will consider first positive and then consider negative later on because that is a quadratic equation, meaning there are two values for x. First one is considering the positive and the second will be considering the negative sign here. So, continuing we have your b is 2 squared minus 4. Your a is 3 times c, which is 1, divided by 2 times a, which is 3. Let's consider first the value inside the radical. So that is 2 squared minus 4 times 3 times 1 and this one is equal to let me write it here negative 3 oh this should be b your b is 2 sorry plus and minus square root of negative 8 divided by 2 times 3 is 6. If you will notice, we have here a, ne a square root of negative 8. And if you will try to s input that in your calculator, it will have, it will say math error. Because the square root of a negative value, square root, of a negative number is an imaginary number. So if that is an imaginary number, meaning there are no maximum or minimum point. We don't have anything to test because there are no points at all. They are all imaginary numbers. So let's try to check whether there is an inflection point. So y double prime is equal to, or let's copy first y prime. For us to solve it, there is y prime. 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. So y double prime is equal to 6x plus 2. And to find the point of inflection, we equate it to, to 0. This is for the point of inflection. So if you will continue, 6x plus 2 equal to 0, we have... 6x transpose 2 to the other side, this will become negative 2. x is equal to negative 2 over 6, or this is negative 1 third. So we have a point for the point of inflection, that is the corresponding value for x. We need to solve for the, its value in its y value. So as I have mentioned, that should be an ordered pair because we are writing it, or we need to draw it in the Cartesian plane. And the Cartesian plane is composed of ordered pairs, x and y. So, our y here, let's just copy this one. So that I don't... Okay, uh, I think I can memorize this. Your y is equal to x raised to 3 plus x raised to 2 plus x plus 1. 
So for the value of y, this this is equal to negative one third. The quantity is to three plus negative one third is to two plus negative one third plus one. And if you will input that in your calculators, you will have negative one third raised to three plus negative one third raised to two plus negative one third plus one. This is equal to 20 over 27. So we have a point of inflection at negative one third, 20 over 27. This is R, is a point of inflection. So that is our second example. Last example, we have our last example, 3, y is equal to x raised to 3 minus x squared plus 4. Let's try to look for the critical points. y prime should be taken first. This is equal to 3x squared minus 2x plus 0. And to look for the maximum and minimum point, we should equate y prime to 0. 3x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. If you will factor out x here, you will have x times 3x minus 2 equal to 0. And we will have two values for x. For the first factor, x is equal to 0. And 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, why are we doing this? Because for multiplication, if one factor is 0, then the product should be equal to 0. So we are trying to get the possibility wherein this factor is 0, we will have a value. And what if this other factor is 0? Then you will have a, a value. And then, either of the conditions, you will have a product equal to 0. That, that is why we are equating each factor by 0. And then we will have here, if that is x is equal to 0, we don't need to do anything there. For the second part, we have 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. Transpose this negative 2 to the other side of the equation. You will have 3x and this is equal to positive 2. x is equal to 2 thirds. So we have two points. And we need to find the corresponding value of y. Let's call this x sub 1 and y sub 1 x sub 2 and y sub 2. So, the formula or the equation of y is equal to x raised to 3 minus x squared plus 4. For y sub 1, this is 0 raised to 3 minus 0 squared plus 4. y sub 1 is equal to positive 4. These are just 0. So you have y sub 1 equal to positive 4. We have our first point, which is 0 and 4. This is our point 1. For the second point, y sub 2 is equal to 2 thirds raised to 3 minus 2 thirds raised to 2 plus 4. If you try to solve this, let me use my calculator. x raised to 3 minus x squared plus 4 if x is 2 thirds. This would be equal to 104 over 27 or that is equivalent to 
card. So y sub 2 is 104 over 27. So we have our point 2 and that is 2 thirds and 104 over 27. So we have our two points. One of these is a maximum and one of these is a minimum. Or it can be that both of them are maximum points or both of So one of these is a minimum and one of these is a maximum point. If there are three points, it's either that one of it is a maximum and two of them are minimum points or two of them are minimum points and one is a maximum point. So let's see. To test whether these points are a maximum or a minimum point, we need to find y double prime. And of course, that, that is taken from y prime. Going back, our y prime is 3x squared minus 2x. So for y double prime, this is 6x minus 2. So we have this equation for y double prime. We need to test. So for point 1, 0 and 4, point 2, we have 2 thirds and 104 over 27. So for the test, this would be y double prime if x is 0. Remember this is representing x, the x value in the Cartesian plane and this is your y, the abscissa and your ordinate. So if x is 0, 6 times 0 minus 2, y double prime for the second point is 6 times, this is your x, sub 2, y sub 2, this is x sub 1 and y sub 1. So this is positive 2 thirds minus 2. For the first point, y double prime is equal to 6 times 0 is 0. And you will left with, you are left with negative 2. That is a negative meaning point 1 is a maximum point. For the other one, 6 times 2 over 3 is 4 minus 2 is positive 2. For this 1, this is a positive value, positive 2. Since that is a positive, meaning point 2 is a minimum point. So, we have your maximum point and that is equal to 0, 4. Your minimum point is 2 thirds and 104 over 27. And to complete the critical points, that would be equating y double prime to 0. And remember, y double prime from our equation is 6x minus 2. So, 6x minus 2 is equal to 0, transpose negative 2 to the other side, you will have 6x equals to positive 2, and x is equal to 1 third. To find the value of y, this is equal to x cubed minus x squared plus 4. minus x squared plus 4. This would be 1 third raised to 3 minus 1 third raised to 2 plus 4. The value of y for the point of inflection would be let me use my calculator x squared plus 4 it should be 1 
106 over 27. So we have a point of inflection at 1 third and 106 over 27. This is almost equal to Three point ninety-three. If you try to graph this curve, which I will not teach anymore because I believe that you already know this in your from your pre-calculus. We have your graph. I use an online application for the graph because I believe that you already know this you should know this already this is 0, 04 and that is our maximum point from our computation let us rewrite our answers here the maximum point a zero four. The minimum point is is that two thirds from what I remember one o seven or one o four. Let's just go back one o four over twenty seven. And your point of inflection is at one third and one o six over twenty seven. So let us check. This is the minimum point. The point of inflection is somewhat here. That is one third point three three and three point ninety two. Let me take a screenshot of this one. If you will notice, the curve continues in the positive infinity at this portion and in the negative infinity at this portion. That can be visible if you try to zoom it out. It continues in the positive and negative infinity. So going back, we have here your points. So this one, the maximum point is at 0, 04, the minimum point is at 2 thirds, 0. 0.667 and 104 over 27. In decimal, that is 3.85. And for your point of inflection, where the change in concavity happen, happens, that is at, oh, there is a minimal error here because in the graph it is not shown, but that should be 0 0.33 and 3.93, which is very close to this point. That is where the change in concavity happens. Those are your critical points. That is one of the many applications of higher derivatives in calculus. I hope that you understand these lessons and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much.